What new discoveries are waiting out there? What new adventures can we see? What are the answers to the never-ending questions in your brain that's in a race to find the reason or the place from the fine words to outer space so that the truth of any case can be unfurled in the real world? Science in the real world. Hi, I'm Olivia. Welcome to Real World Science. Your brain is able to communicate with other parts of your body in a split second. How does this work? Well, that's what this program is all about. Get ready as we explore your body's brain and nervous system. When you're hot, your body may begin to perspire. When your finger touches something sharp, you quickly move your finger away. What causes your body to respond? Well, most responses your body makes to the outside world are controlled by your nervous system. Your nervous system receives stimuli from the outside world and inside your body too. Stimuli are events or conditions that cause an organism to react, like a pinch on your arm, or biting into a spicy pepper, or banging your big toe. The nervous system is your body's communication network. It gathers and interprets information about what's happening outside your body, like sniffing the sweet smell of a flower, tasting a savory hamburger, and seeing the world around you. It also keeps your heart and lungs and other organs working properly. Your nervous system allows you to run and dribble a basketball without falling over to think through a difficult math problem and remember your friend's telephone number. Your nervous system allows you to experience emotions from love and happiness to anger and frustration. As your body receives information about what is happening, your nervous system directs the way your body will respond. Your nervous system is pretty amazing and very complex. Messages are constantly being transferred throughout your body in the form of fast-moving electrical energy. This energy comes from specialized cells called neurons. The message that a neuron carries is called a nerve impulse. A neuron consists of a cell body that includes a nucleus. The neuron receives messages from other cells through short extensions called dendrites. Dendrites carry messages to the cell body. Information is transmitted to other cells by a fiber called an axon. At the tip of each axon branch is an axon terminal. Axons carry messages away from the cell body. A neuron can have many dendrites, but only one axon. But axons have more than one tip, so the information can go to more than one cell. There are three types of neurons that work together in your body to help you gather information and respond to it. They are sensory neurons, interneurons, and motor neurons. Here's how they work when you answer a telephone call. When the phone rings, sensory neurons gather information. Sensory neurons have special dendrites called receptors that detect sound. The receptors trigger nerve impulses in sensory neurons. The nerve impulse passes from the sensory neuron to the interneurons in the brain. You realize the phone is ringing, and then your brain decides you should answer the phone. Nerve impulses then travel along thousands of motor neurons. These send messages to the muscles. The muscles respond, and you pick up the phone. Every single day, millions of nerve impulses travel through your nervous system. Each of those impulses begin in the dendrites of the neuron. The nerve impulse travels in the form of an electrical and chemical signal. The signal travels to the nerve cell body, down the axon, until it reaches the axon tip. There is a gap, or synapse, between the axon tip and another body structure that could be another dendrite, an organ, or a muscle. 
The axon tips release chemicals that enable the impulse to cross the synapse. Your nervous system is divided into two parts. The central nervous system includes your brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system that includes all the nerves that connect every part of your body to the central nervous system. The central nervous system is your body's control center. The brain, which is located in your skull, controls most functions in the body. Many of these functions are automatic, like breathing. These are referred to as involuntary. Other activities controlled by your brain are voluntary. Let's say you want to kick a ball. Your brain sends signals along motor neurons to the muscles in your legs to contract. Your leg moves and you kick the ball. The brain is made up of three parts. The largest part of your brain is called the cerebrum. It is where you think, learn, remember, and make judgments. The cerebrum also controls voluntary movements of the skeletal muscles. Because of your cerebrum, you can play your favorite video game and react to what's happening. The cerebrum is divided into a right and left half, which are also called hemispheres. The right hemisphere of the cerebrum controls the left side of the body, while the left hemisphere controls the right side of the body. Each half of the cerebrum also controls different kinds of mental activity. The right half of the cerebrum primarily controls activities that involve imagination, creativity, and artistic ability. The left half is associated with speaking, reading, writing, and logical thinking. The second largest part of your brain is called the cerebellum. The cerebellum is located underneath the back of your cerebrum. The cerebellum receives sensory impulses from your skeletal muscles and joints. Your cerebellum keeps track of your body's position and causes skeletal muscles to make adjustments so you can keep your balance and don't fall over. The third part of your brain is called the medulla. It's the smallest part of the brain, but you couldn't live without it. The medulla controls your body's involuntary actions like heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing. The spinal cord runs down the center of your back and is surrounded by a protective bone structure called the vertebral column. The spinal cord is about as thick as your thumb and contains nerve fibers that pass impulses to and from the brain. It is the link between your brain and the peripheral nervous system. The rest of the nerves in your body make up the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system carries messages to and from the central nervous system. It sends information to the brain and carries out orders from the brain. The nerves of the peripheral nervous system can be divided into two groups, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The nerves of the somatic nervous system control voluntary actions like playing the guitar. Then, there is the autonomic nervous system that controls involuntary actions such as adjusting the diameter of blood vessels. Autonomic nerves work automatically and are controlled by the brain. Have you ever stepped on a sharp object? What happened? You probably pulled your foot up without even thinking about it. That quick involuntary action is called a reflex. What happens is that the message, pain, travels to your spinal cord. The message to move your foot travels back to the muscles in your leg. If you had to wait for your brain to get the message, you could be seriously hurt. Sensory receptors keep you informed of what's happening around you and inside of you. The information is converted into electrical signals and sent to your brain. These are called sensations. Your brain is the place where you have feelings, emotions, memories, and ideas triggered by sensations. Your body has many different types of sensory receptors. Receptors in your eyes detect light. Your tongue has receptors that detect chemicals in the foods you eat. Your ears have receptors that detect vibrations or sound waves. 
Your nose has receptors that detect particles in the air. Your skin has receptors for pressure and temperature. Your eye is a highly complex sensory organ. As this diagram shows, your eye is covered by a transparent membrane that protects it. That membrane is called the cornea. As visible light is reflected by an object, it enters through the pupil, which is an opening in the front of your eye. The size of the pupil is controlled by the iris, which regulates the amount of light entering your eye. Your iris also gives your eyes color. Light passes through the pupil, then passes through the lens. The lens is a curved structure that bends light rays. The image it produces is upside down. The light is detected by the retina, located at the back of the eye that contains photoreceptors. There are two kinds of photoreceptors. There are rods, which can detect very dim light. Rods are important for seeing at night. They help you see black, white, and shades of gray. The other kind of photoreceptors are called cones. They work well in bright light and allow us to see colors. When light energy strikes the rods and cones, it triggers a nerve impulse. This impulse travels through an optic nerve, one for the left eye and one for the right. The impulse travels to the cerebrum, where two things happen. The cerebrum turns the image right side up and combines the image from both eyes to produce one image. Your ear is another sensory organ. It responds to the stimuli of sound. Here's how it works. Sound is produced by vibrations that create waves of moving particles through the air. When sound waves reach your outer ear, they are funneled into the middle ear, causing your eardrum to vibrate. The eardrum then causes tiny ear bones to vibrate. One of the tiny bones vibrates against the cochlea, a tiny snail-shaped organ of the inner ear. Neurons in the cochlea convert these waves to electrical impulses and send them to the cerebrum through the auditory nerve. The impulses are then interpreted as sounds. The sense of taste is dependent mostly on your tongue. The receptors for taste are clustered in your taste buds. Taste buds are embedded in the sides of tiny bumps in your tongue called papillae. Taste buds located in different parts of the tongue respond differently to different types of chemicals. One type responds to sweet tastes, another to salty, the others to sour and bitter tastes. Smell and taste are very closely related. Your brain combines the information that comes from your taste buds with the information that comes from your nose to give you a sense of flavor. In the upper part of your nasal cavity are olfactory cells. They're the receptors for smell. When you inhale, chemicals are dissolved in the moist lining of your nasal cavity. Your nose can distinguish about 50 basic odors. Your skin is your largest sensory organ. It contains receptors that respond to changes in temperature and pain. Pain acts as a warning system to protect you. Well, there you have it, your body's communication system, your brain, spinal cord, hundreds of millions of neurons, your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin, all working together to keep you informed about what's happening inside your body and outside in the real world.